Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design, and today I'm going to take you step by step through a tutorial on how to create a tube of lipstick. I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension to create my shapes and make a 3D object, so let's go. So the first step is to choose a reference image that you're going to trace and use as your inspiration, and I've selected this Billy. Uh, I guess they call the salve. It looks like a lipstick to me. Um, I actually have it here, so I would be able to take my own pictures if I wanted. It comes in this cool tube, but um, this is what it looks like. It's got this like translucent shell. It's got this color tube on the inside, and then it also has the colored salve. So we're going to recreate this one because I like it. I don't get paid for product placement. I'm not like that. I just am picking this because I like it and because the shapes are very symmetrical and it's easy to create. So I guess that's my one tip I'll start with is if you find a shape that's hard to recreate or stumps you, just pick something that's slightly different. So for this one with the, the lipstick shape, normally there's that like taper, like that teardrop shape with the for the actual product. So I'm going to skip that because it's a little too complicated for what Illustrator can do. I haven't found the right workaround, but when I do, I'll update you. In the meantime, I think you could get away with just having a squared off tube, you know, unless you're really needing that shape. Um, you can just fudge your way around it for the sake of your mock-up and your design. So don't box yourself into a corner. You can definitely do it. It just takes a little bit of creativity and less is more sometimes. So I'm going to start by showing my rulers and I'm also going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to trace around the base here so that I can find that center point so that everything is proportional. So now that I've drawn my rectangle I'm going to drag a guide right to the center there and then I'm going to actually reuse this rectangle. I normally delete it but I think it's going to come in handy here. So I'm going to choose a color and just eye drop it so that I can have the color that matches. Now when you export your OBJ files in Illustrator, it carries the color property with it. So we can skip another step in Dimension by just choosing the color here. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm going to slightly bevel the edges because I think that adds just a little something, but only the outside edges. So I'm going to take um, A, the A arrow, and I'm going to click on these two, and then I'm going to pull in the radius like 0 0.04 inches, like just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to copy this rectangle, drag it up, and it kind of moves in a little bit. So I'm going to shrink that down, and I'm also going to create the inset because I want the translucency to show when I have it open. So you can see the, the translucency is there of this piece. So I need to create like an inset for this tube to sit in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do that by creating another rectangle that is this shape, dragging it to that center point, copy this color, send it to the back, but then I'm gonna make a copy of this rectangle. So I'm gonna drag, now there's two of these shapes and then I'm going to subtract it. It's important to move that forward. So now I'm going to overlap these shapes and I'm going to click minus front so that this when revolved will have an inset for the other tube to sit in. So then the other important thing is to take this tube, drag it down, and then we're also going to bevel this one corner. Now there's another one, another tube, so this one is also slightly beveled, just a little. And I'm gonna choose the peach color, drag that up. And then I'm gonna make my salve color. So take another rectangle, drag it down. I'm gonna choose a nice pink berry color and then select this top one and curve that down. So now when I take my reference image off, these are the shapes that we're left with. Now you can change these colors, you can change the shapes and dimensions to fit your reference image. Um, I'm going to roll with these ones. So I'm going to select the top shape and just move top to bottom under our 3D and materials tab. I'm going to click revolve. So now I'll repeat that process for each of these shapes. So click on each individually and click revolve. Same all the way down. 
these two shapes, I can combine them or I can keep them separate. For the sake of this one, I'll merge these together and then hit revolve for this too. So now you can see each of these layers. It's pretty simple, right? So if I want to take it a step further, I'll create this outside cap so that I can put it to the side. You know, I'll have a few more options with that. So what I'll do is I'll drag this shape to the side because I want these to match up. And what I'll actually do is just delete some of these anchor points. And you can see as I'm going that my shape is changing, my 3D shape. If that's distracting or making your computer fan run like mine is, then you can hide the 3D materials for now and just um, turn that off. What I'm also gonna do is move these shapes. I'm going to drag these to the top here. Take this anchor point and bevel that one in slightly. And then this is a pretty flush um, connection. So I'm gonna come back to this anchor point and I'm gonna drag that one completely straight. So important step with this tube. We want it to be hollow, right? So we grab a sinker point, I'll curve that around, but I wanna get as close to the inside as possible so that those fit really well. Okay, and use shape mode to minus. Now we have this little skinny shape and now we turn on materials and it'll be hollow on the inside and fit really nicely. And even if we drag these two over just to see how they align, you can see that if we put these to the side, that goes over. So we could even make it a little thicker if we wanted to. So we can take these, make those so it lines up. We can also take this corner, since I said it was flush, and tweak that so that those align and snap into place. So yeah, I'll delete that one, bring that one back. So now I'll click on each of these shapes individually and click Export Selection from the File menu. So I clicked the salve, then the little plastic thing. That's all little plastic things, but the little plastic thing. Here's the other little plastic thing. <laughs> and then the base and export selection. So then I'm simply gonna name these. We'll call that salve, plastic one, plastic two. I don't know the technical names, you guys base and cap. And I'll select all of these, select the OBJ format and export. Now that we have all of our pieces and parts, we can take them into Adobe Dimension and start assembling. Once inside Dimension, I'm going to click new, give me a new canvas, and you can make this canvas as big or as small as you want. So now I'm gonna start assembling the pieces. So I'll start from base and move up. I find this just a little easier to go in a specific pattern. So what I'll do is start with this base. All right, now that I've placed the base, I can zoom in and get it positioned. Um, I'll just keep working my way through these pieces. And I might need to go check my reference material to make sure that I'm doing them in the right order. Yep, so this piece, plastic two, goes inside here. And then we have plastic one, just that other little piece. And then we have the salve. And I'll rename these. Again, I wish these names would come through from the files when you place them in, but they don't. Plastic, two, and then base. All right, so now I'm gonna select all of these by holding shift and clicking and come to our align tool and I'm going to click these align center and center so that they all are aligned center. <laughs> Can't forget the cap here. There we go. And I think I'll just keep it to the side, like the reference, so that we can see all of the beautiful work underneath. Now we can start customizing. And it looks like the colors did not come with the OBJ files. So that is a mystery for me to look into because it happens for me sometimes and other times it doesn't. So I'll let you know when I find out about that. Now we're gonna start adding the materials. So I'm gonna come down I want to find the plastic. 
plastic. I'm gonna start with these two because they will be the same. And there's some translucency here, which I find a fun challenge. So I'm going to keep these white, I think. Um, this is the cap. So if I click on the cap and come into the settings here, I'm gonna increase the roughness slightly because it does still have somewhat of a shine. It's, it's not totally matte. Um, roughness is there, and then when we come to translucence, that's where we can turn that down a little bit. So when I hit the render preview, we should be able to see through it. And the reason why you want to play with translucence instead of opacity is because opacity makes it disappear completely as a shape, where the translucence makes the material solid. It's just the material that is becoming more see-through. So I'm also choosing white for the color there. And I'm gonna turn that off because my fan is going crazy, but I think those are good settings. So I'm actually gonna choose roughness at like 7% and then click on the base and copy those same settings. So changing the base color to white, roughness, I was at like seven, right? Seven or eight. And then translucence, I had that at like 60. And I can always go back and change it. I think that maybe 40 is better. Now I'm gonna go back here because I did like the color. It seems like they changed their packaging recently. Maybe mine is different here, but I'm gonna go with the reference image because I can easily sample those hex values and put those into dimensions so that it matches pretty exactly. I'm gonna click on the color box. I'm gonna copy that hex value here and I will go back to this plastic piece, click on the base color and paste that number in here but also make sure that you apply a material first because it will override it as you saw, but it remembered what hex value I put in, so that's an easy fix. While we're here, I'm gonna drop the plastic there. And then for the actual salve, I mean, it has somewhat of a sheen to it. I think I'll choose matte. It's kind of a nondescript texture, but I think it's gonna go best. And now I'm gonna go back and grab my colors. We'll come back to this plastic piece number one and copy that. Plastic piece number one. Change in the color. Boom. And then the salve color. Copy. Select the salve. Boom. All right, let's see how this looks. I think I need to add a little more translucency to the base. So I wanna see some of that pink come through. I'm gonna select plastic one and two and the salve. And I'm gonna move these up together. So I'm gonna go back to the base. So base, plastic. I think I'll go back to the 60% for the base and see what we've got there. Hey, that's giving us a pretty good reflection of what's happening here, so I'm digging it. Okay, so then the last thing is to add any graphics you want to this. So to drag and drop graphics, I could type silver moon and I could give it a nice tall font like Antonio and I can even sample the color there. I think I'll go all caps with it, go to file, export selection, and we'll select PNG. You can only drop in image files as graphics in dimension. So now that I have that graphic called name, I'll come in, just drag and drop on the area that I wanna add that. And from here, you can style it how you want. So I'll come in, I'll make that really big. And then I can also add a metallic flavor to it if I wanted it to look fancy. Oh my gosh, but that's so cute. All right guys, and that's how it's done. Feel free to subscribe, it really helps me out. Leave a comment below letting me know what video you wanna see next. Until next time.